Hallelujah. Amen. The power of attitude part three. The power of attitude part three. So today we are to look at attitude and success in life. Or attitude and prosperity. Attitude and success. That's what we are to look at today. Now just to remind you again. As I was starting on this series, I said your attitude and not aptitude only. Your attitude, not your aptitude only. That's what determines your altitude. Your attitude and not just your wisdom, your intelligence, or your skills. But your attitude also determines how high you go or you're to go in your life. I also showed you from the scriptures, the Bible also agrees with this in Proverbs chapter 23, verse 7. Proverbs 23, verse 7. It says, as a man thinks, in his heart, so is he. As a man thinks, other versions say, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. You are not far away from your thoughts. You are where you are today, partly also because of the pattern of your thinking. The way you think reveals who you are. Amen. Some people like to put it this way. You are a product of your thoughts. Your character, your behavior reveals your thoughts. So if your thinking is not right, that will be portrayed in your behavior, in your character. If your thinking is rotten, no wonder your behavior will also be rotten. Because you cannot have a healthy thinking and have a rotten character or behavior. It doesn't work like that. Your thinking shapes, molds your behavior, your character. So sometimes we try hard to change our character without paying attention to our pattern of thinking. The way we think. Change your thinking and you change your behavior. Change your thinking and you change your lifestyle. Trying to change your lifestyle without changing your thinking is like trying to kill a tree just by removing or plucking off the leaves. If you really want to kill the tree completely, you need to go down to the roots. Cut down the roots. Then uh, the tree will die. So as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. So remember, your attitude will guide you along your journey. Your journey of success shall be guided by your attitude. You have a healthy attitude. Definitely the possibility of you to succeed is there. You know, sometimes we, we, we leave everything to prayer and yet there are certain things which are ought to be accomplished by the way we think. How many of us have gone to night of prayers? How many of us have been laid hands on? How many of us have slept or spent nights and nights in the mountains praying and seeking God and yet things seem to be the same in our lives? Maybe it's time for you to check on your thinking, your attitude. Because maybe you have prayed enough and God is waiting on you that I will move in your life the day you change your attitude. And you're waiting on God. I've been praying. God said, I'm waiting on you. <laughs> so who's, who's going to do what? Who's going to make the first move? And God doesn't lose anything. 
if it doesn't do anything to you. So you have to be the first one to make a move. Move. So your attitude will guide you along your journey. Whether it will guide you towards goals, your, your goals or away from them is up to you. All of us, we have attitude. Nobody can say that he doesn't have. <laughs> All of us. Though we, we blame others, I don't like his attitude. And when you say that, you're also revealing, exhibiting, showing your attitude. You don't even know. I don't like his attitude. By saying that, you are also showing your attitude. So why are you saying that you don't like his attitude and yet... Your attitude needs some help or so. Can you say, God, help my attitude? The way you look at things, the way you look at life, if uh, you look at life with a positive attitude. The possibility for you to succeed in life is high. Very, very high. But when you look at life issues with a negative attitude, the opposite is also true. The possibility of you to die where you have been 20 years ago is also high. And sometimes we cheat or deceive one another. Claim it and you have it. We have been claiming all these things. How much of those things that you've been claiming you have them? Certain things that come not just by claiming them. But by doing something. And that first something is by changing your attitude. In Romans 12 says, this is Apostle Paul, he's talking to the church in Romans. He said, guys, I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. That's verse 1. In verse 2 it says, be ye not conformed to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind." By renewing of your mind so that you may know the perfect will of God. Which means a certain way of thinking prohibits you to know the perfect will of God. Hallelujah, church. Am I talking to somebody here? Your attitude. But now the question is, what kind of attitude should I have in order to realize my dreams or in order for me to succeed? What kind of attitude do the people we know that are successful outside there have? We need to learn from them. And I want to share with you a few attitudes. And attitude number one you ought to have if you are to succeed, if you are to prosper in your life. Attitude number one, always work to get better. Yeah, amen. That should be your attitude towards work. Always work to get better. Desire to be better. To be the best in what you do. Always work to get better. Always. The success of yesterday should not hinder you to realize the success of tomorrow. Get better, get better. In other words, I'm saying, always work to get better at what you do. No matter how successful you are in life. To be, move. Always work to get better at what you do. 
Amen. Whatever your hands find to do, do it diligently. Do it well. No matter how successful you were yesterday, but today is today, do it better. So your attitude should be, I have to be the best. If you are employed, there should be nobody at your workplace who can take your position, your place. And the company or organization should think twice to fire you. <laughs> you know, some of us, you know, the companies are just looking for an opportunity when to fire you. And yet you call yourself a Christian. Give them tough time. How are we going to let this guy go? Because the guy is very good. The Bible says, whatsoever Joseph did, he prospered. Whether he was in prison, he prospered as a prisoner. Hey! Hallelujah, church! <laughs> Always work to get better. And you guys that you place these things, Always work to get better. The guys was on the voices. If yesterday your voice was raspy, today or tomorrow, try to fine tune it. People should be surprised. Is this the same? And they should come to peep. Is this a new person? Hey! It's who? It's my imponera. Really? It's a crazy, really? It's a wazy. Ah, I thought it's uh, Sister Sinachi has come here. That should be surprised when you <laughs> clap your best guitar. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Some people should just go crazy. So somebody can worship God with this way, with a best guitar. You go crazy. And you with a lady git, you can make this thing talk. This. People, they make this thing talk. Let's not just leave these things to rock and roll. Because that's where we hear them. And they go crazy. He said, hey, Jamba Jugwira Chito. Why can the spirit of God in your work do the same? If him it is the influence of drugs, why is it the Holy Spirit is not doing the same in you? Uh, we leave all good things to the devil. The substandard things that said, uh, Jesus. Ah, and they say, you know what? He was born in a manger. So what? To hell to that thinking. That's because you, he, he even rode on a donkey. Oh, he rode on a donkey so that I can ride on a horse. If he rode on a donkey, me on a horse now. Always work to get better. Now, listen to Proverbs 22, verse 9. Proverbs 22, verse 29 says, Do you see truly competent workers? <laughs> competent workers, they will serve kings. Rather than working for ordinary people. Do you see a skilled person? He will serve kings and not ordinary people. Do you think Igamuz Palace, when they wanted to hire a cook, <laughs> would they come for you? <laughs> The way you, you, you do with vegetables, garabu, garabu. I said, ah, this one will kill our president. Be good. If they give you food, sir, prepare food, sir, that somebody when he's eating, he should feel like he's eating sausage. And yet it is the food, sir. How? <laughs> you 
You know, sometimes you prepare your food with a grudge inside of you. Do you think you can do a good job? You cannot do a good job. May God help us in Jesus' mighty name. Be good at what you do. Leave a signature wherever you go. People should know that Moshe was here. How do you know? Look at his footsteps. Here. <laughs> so that when, when you, 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 you are to leave, you should, eh, I wish you had the My brother, my brother, when you are in that box there, beat them to the glory of God. <laughs> I, I see some of them, they even throw sticks. And they go bang, bang, bang. That doesn't just come by prayer. No. I saw another guy, he's beating something, he goes like with the sticks. Bang, 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 bang. He's, eh. bang, 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 bang. Eh. I said, what kind of intercession produces this kind of playing drums? No. It's being skilled, being good, getting better every day, improving. If you want to succeed, improve at what you do. You cannot prosper with a, a mediocre kind of thinking, mediocrity. Just being average. My friend, there is much. You know, good is an enemy of great, eh? Did you hear what I've said? And some of us were satisfied with the good, huh? and if it's a good, my friend, there is an excellent. Strive for excellent. So if today you had good, tomorrow is going to be very good. The other day, excellent. And the following day, the teacher will not know what to say. You just be not, ah, this boy. I don't know. I don't know, maybe because it was the, the pastoral thing was already in me. I remember in secondary school, I used to challenge my teacher. BK, not any other subject, BK. I used to tell them, ask whatever question, but me, I cannot get below 98 in your exams. And the other day, he came pompously, whosoever is going to get 80 in these exams, I'll give him 5,000. I said, What? And to his dismay, I got 100%. I Bible knowledge, you are. Are you surprised that I'm a pastor? Because I mean, I was reading the Bible, it was me. And you, what can you ask me from the Bible? I've already read it. I know it. Being good at what you do. So always... So he said, do you see a man skilled in his work? He will stand before kings and not ordinary people. If you are to succeed, always work to get better. Because it is the same work you do that will make other people to spot you wherever you are. Doesn't matter how far they may throw you or they may send you, but no, whatever you have will cause other people to look for you. Yes, there is time to pray. <laughs> mm -hmm. Things which are to be achieved by praying, pray. But things that are to be achieved by working, work. There are certain things you can only achieve them by getting dirty. Not in a wrong way. If you are to walk, walk. If you are to work, work. These things, they should not hinder us to succeed. Ah, you look sharp, man. Ah, you can't do that. You can't go there. Hey, I will not eat this. This one to put food on the table. You won't applaud me, clap hands for me. Ah, you look so sharp, Pastor. Yeah. And I don't want to work because I want to maintain this. You should be asking, what next? After they have applauded you, you are looking smart. What next? If you are married, you go home 
the wife will be waiting. Yes, I heard people were talking about your suit, but there is no sort here. I said, huh? Don't say, huh, me. There is no sort. That's now you realize the suit <laughs> will not bring the sort. Then it's time to remove it. And you hang it. He said, my friend, <laughs> I'll find you after I bring sort here. But for now, <laughs> yeah, you go out. Can you say, help me God, help me God. In Jesus' mighty name. Number two. Don't give in to complacency. Don't give in. In other words, never stop pushing for more just because of one registered success. Never stop pushing for more. In those days, the richest man in the world was John D. Rockefeller. And he was asked, how much money is enough to you? His response was, one more dollar. <laughs> one more dollar. If I don't have one more, then I don't have enough. <laughs> Complacency is what kills success. When you reach at a point you feel like, ah, uh -huh. <laughs> I have it all. Oh, it begins to go down. The same day. So keep pushing forward. Keep pushing forward. If you are to succeed. Are you with me, church? Never stop pushing for more. Just because of one registered Success. You know, most of the times when you have succeeded in one area, you feel like, hey, you have been compensated and you have to sit down. Don't do that. Don't. Keep on. The next thing you have to do is how am I going to keep or to maintain this success that I've registered? What I have achieved today what am I going to do? Philippians chapter 3, verse 12 to 14. The apostle Paul says, I don't mean that I have already achieved these things or that I have already reached perfection, but I press on to possess that perfection. I press on. Lord, I have done so much, but I'm still pressing on because I know there is so much. I'm, I keep on moving, going forward. And verse 13 says, Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. I press toward the mark for the prize of the higher calling of God in Christ Jesus. I press on. Keep pressing on. Even when it gets hard. You know, the harder it gets, the more determined you should become in your life. Most of the times when it gets hard, we want to give up. Hey, it's getting tough. No. It's calling for more from you. Because you know, there is so much in you that you can put in. So put in so much. Put in more. Put in more. It's getting hard, my friend. After you pass through, you want to be the same person. You'll be different. You will be different. So don't quickly give up. Complacency is not good. Don't just take it. Whatever it takes, keep a determined, hard-working attitude. 
Don't give into complacency, no matter how successful you are now. That's how you are to succeed. That's how we are to succeed in life. That's how we are to prosper in life. Guys, this thing of come and buy a sticker from uh, the man of God and you'll be blessed. This kind of messages should be for those who are naive in their faith. Babies. But for you, you should know that certain things I can only achieve them if I work hard. And prayer will just fuel that. Prayer will not just bring food in my house. Prayer will not just bring the degree I need into my life. I need to work hard. Promotion. Hey. Bring a seed and you'll be promoted. My friend, there is somebody who's working hard, who's investing his time in this, and you think God will just bless you like that? It's a biblical. From your sweat thou shalt eat. <laughs> Hallelujah. You shall eat it from your... So if you are sweating, don't blame yourself. You are doing the right thing. You will eat. You understand? I'm sweating, eh? So don't be surprised if I'm eating because I'm sweating or so. Some of those that are not sweating today, maybe they, it was yesterday they had sweat <laughs> and you were not there. You didn't see their sweat. You are just seeing them eating today. Said, oh, I wonder when I'm off watch. You were not there. <laughs> you were not there when they were limping and people are laughing. Mugafika, at least I'm moving. I'm not stationed. I'm moving. And you are asking me, I'm Nikafika. <laughs> Amen. It's painful. Yeah, but what are you doing? Yeah, you're moving. Some people will be feeling sorry for you. Don't let that to get inside of you. Because you're not a person to be pitied. <laughs> and don't survive on people's pity. Handouts. No, refuse. That's not how God created you. <laughs> it's painful. Hey, I'm going, Baba. Yes. The more you keep, the other day, today you are, you are doing like this. As you keep going, it's going to be changing. And people say, hey, you're walking now. Oh, oh, it's not now. I started even when I was leaping, I was walk, I was walking. So don't give up. Maybe some of us, that's where we are. We feel like we are limping. Don't give up. Okay? Keep pushing. Keep pushing. Hey, Pastor, but this leg, when it starts from here, it comes here and it goes around. And then I hear, yes, keep moving. Said, hey, there will be times you'll be required maybe to rest a little bit. Rest. But don't dwell there. <laughs> Pick yourself up. <laughs> you continue. Hallelujah. May you prosper in your life in Jesus' mighty name. With the same heart, heart you have, keep pushing. You don't have it now, yes. But that does not mean God is denying you that. It is coming. You will realize, you will get it if you keep on pressing. This is what Paul said, guys. You may be celebrating what I've done yesterday, but all that is behind me. I'm looking forward. I keep pressing on, pressing on, pressing on. If you get promoted at your workplace, do not let that promotion get into your head and mess up your heart. Ask yourself, why have I been promoted? Is there anything that I can do better than yesterday? And because whatsoever you do as a Christian, you do it as unto the Lord. 
That's what the Bible says. I want people to see Jesus in me. They should come and ask you, how do you manage to work like this in these hard times of life? My friend, I derive my joy from somewhere else, not from this world. When all things are messy out there, I see Jesus smiling inside the darkness. That's why you see also me, I smile when things are not okay in my life. Don't give into complacency. No matter how successful you are in life. Number three, be prepared when opportunities arise. Amen. You know, the problem with some of us, we don't prepare for opportunities. They find us or they caught us unaware. And the issue with opportunities, opportunities do not present themselves as opportunities most of the times. They come in a form of problems. That's how opportunities in life come. So when a problem comes, if you have a sick attitude, you only see a problem. <laughs> you will not see an opportunity in that. Maybe it could be an opportunity for you to learn something that you did wrong yesterday. Let's go to soccer a little bit. When you go to the playing field, you see that bench where you have uh, other players. They are called the substitutes, isn't it? And you can sit there and complaining. I keep sitting here. My friend, those substitutes, I see them. Sometimes they sit there. They, are, they move their legs. Because they know at any time I might be called in. So they are ready. Sometimes they walk home. <laughs> Why do they do that? Preparing for opportunity. So that the moment they are told, come in, they should not go in and they have already a muscle cramp. Ah! They already have a muscle cramp already. No. So they prepare. It's like they are playing with a friend, the boss. They want to keep themselves warmed up. The blood should be running up and down. Everything should be in place. The moment they say, that, hey, talo ambualo, kare kare. Chamanga. Changu pamalo. You sit there, you complain. <laughs> you mean all the training, all the drilling, I should be sitting here. <laughs> and uh, somebody's injured in the playing field. Now they want me to go inside because he's injured. Even the way you go there, it'd be uh, somebody's already injured. Because you are not ready. You're not ready. Your attitude for being on the bench is not right. Have a positive attitude. You are a player in waiting. Anytime you'll be called in. So be ready. Behave as somebody who's waiting to make a difference. Once he's called in, be ready. Be prepared for opportunities. Prepare for opportunities. Because God is what is preparing them for you. But you will not notice them if you are not ready. If you are not prepared, you are not ready. Hallelujah. If somebody will give you 10 million today, what are you going to do with it? You have no plan, no clue, what are you going to do with it? Huh? <laughs> That's why we're not given. You couldn't He doesn't have a plan at all. He is not ready. But you know, when you prepare. You walk like a millionaire. You know that one day, God will surprise me with what I'm doing. I'm preparing you. So you have a plan. So you have a plan. So that we can go lots of money for 30 million. We'll see what will happen to me. Hallelujah. Think different. Act different. Be different because you are different. That's how you, we are to succeed. It's very unfortunate in church. We are to be the people the world should be learning from. 
But so much we learn from the world. We are caught unaware. Because all what we do is only fasting, fasting, fasting. There is time to fast. I'm not talking ill about fasting. There is time to <laughs> So after you have fasted enough, what next? You fast, you have no plan at all. Fasting for what? Do a miracle. Because a God, God of miracle money. Okay, so even if the miracle money comes, what? You are not ready. So be prepared when opportunities arise. Most of us Christians, we are prepared waiting for the second coming of Jesus. <laughs> very, very much prepared. That's why we are not even building good houses. <laughs> Hey. <laughs> exactly. Occupy till I come. So, said, my friend, this world is not my home. I'm just passing through. My treasures are laid up somewhere up beyond the blue. The angels beckons me from heaven's open door. And I can't feel at all in this world anymore. Oh, Lord, you know. Oh, you have no feeling like you. Stop crying. Go and do something. People, it is who's on the zone at the church. Let's not be naive and stupid as though our God is stupid. He's the great I am, the smartest God you would ever think of, God, the greatest designer. Look at the nature. These things that didn't just come by chance. God designed them. Look at your body, the coordination. What I'm doing here, you think they're just happening. It's the, how God designed it. The way I'm thinking is being expressed here. Design. And some of us, because we are so much used to this, Kungo Zuka, Bola Chovala Jabuera You think that everything works like that? Uh -uh. <laughs> if you are able, Rumigiza Urus, Rumigiza Bueno Bueno. Okay? Don't you green here, yellow here. Ready there. Hey, Christmas tree or what? Unless it is beyond your capacity, that's something else. But if you have that, I, 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 I mix it well. <laughs> You're an ambassador, Baba, representing heaven. Look, sharp, sharp, smart, smart. I'm not saying that, Bweka, Bweka, because it will be a Bweka, Bweka. Amen. Be prepared for life opportunities just as you are prepared for Jesus. Jesus is not yet here. <laughs> and the goodness, yes, he hasn't told us when. He said, just be ready. So it's not easy. One hand, you have to be waiting for Jesus. <laughs> Who didn't he tell us when he's coming? <laughs> Keep waiting. On the other hand, <laughs> Prepare for life opportunities. We don't even know when they are going to come. So prepare for both. Your preparation for the opportunities because you're preparing for the coming of Jesus. You know he's coming. <laughs> and he has good thoughts for me. And because he has good plans for me, I plan for the good plans he has for me. In 2 Timothy, chapter 4, this is what uh, the Apostle Paul told uh, young Timothy. Preach the word of God. Be prepared. <laughs> Whether the time is favorable or not. So be prepared. Now, this preparation is not only for preaching. 
Even for life opportunities, be ready. Prepare yourself because God wants to bless you. God wants to elevate you. He wants to take your life to somewhere else. If you have the opportunity to go back to school, go back. Did you hear what I've said? Go back. Go back. Because if you don't go back then, you begin to talk ill about those who are doing well in education. When they come, they speak, they speak that knows the English. You see, in this church, my friend, <laughs> have mercy. Be prepared whether the, the time is favorable or not. Now, you, you go to 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 15. 1 Peter 3, verse 15. I'm about to wrap up now. But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. Be ready. Be prepared for Jesus. Be prepared for life opportunities. And number four, the last one for today. Have the attitude of a winner. Have the attitude of a winner. Winners win before they win. Did you hear that? Winners they win before they win. Meaning that the winning is already established. That's why they engage themselves. Because they have already told themselves that I am a winner. You don't win with an attitude of a loser. You don't win like that. But you win with an attitude of a winner. And for us Christians, we should be motivated by the word of God itself. Because Romans chapter 8 verse 37 says, In all things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. Romans 8 37. In all things we are more than conquerors. That's it for today. Amen. Hallelujah. Next Sunday, God willing, I will be talking about depression. Depression. Sometimes Christians will behave as though we are immune to depression, but we are not. We are depressed. We carry heavy baggages. Unnecessary ones. So don't miss next Sunday. Amen. Let's all stand up. And I know if I can ask who wants to succeed in life, all of us are going to say, yes, I, I want to succeed in life. And I'm not going to ask that question, but I want to ask you, will you be willing to do these things? Go home. Look at your attitude. People of God, remember it's not just what happens to you that matters. It's your think, thoughts towards the things that happens to you. Tragedies are there. Jesus said, in this world, you will mourn. You will grieve. But be of good cheer. For I have overcome the world. So it's not the struggle you're going through. It's not the pain that you're going through that is a problem. The problem is you thinking that having a problem is a problem. So change your attitude. Change your attitude. Problems will come in, di in different ways from different angles. They will come. How prepared are you? How good at, are you at what you do? If you hang in there... And don't throw in the towel. In due time, you will sing a song of victory. 
Such times are there. Times of joy are not just for those who are out there. They are also for the children of God. There was a time when Joseph was thrown in prison. He did a good job to interpret the dreams for one gentleman who was released and he asked him some favors. When you get back to your place, please don't forget me. Remember me. But no typical of human beings. Because the guy was not overwhelmed with the good things that he found there. He completely forgot about Joseph. You know, the world can forget you just like that. But God remembers his children. And a situation arose <laughs> that caused the guy who forgot Joseph to remember. And he confessed, yes, I am a sinner. I have not done well. There is a guy in prison who interpreted the dreams. And I promised him to, to say a good word to the king, but I forgot. King, let's go and visit him. The time they were visiting Joseph, he wasn't looking that all good. But he was still a man of faith and he had hope that things would get better. And he was released. He was ready. And when he was ready, he was elevated. He became the governor. Because his attitude towards life was positive. He didn't allow the woes of the cell to destroy his thinking. The pains of life should not distract you, should not drive you away, should not move you away from God. Do not seek shortcuts to, to sort out problems in your life. Wait upon God. God is there with you. God is there with you. It's the lie from the devil. Every time he says, you're forgotten, been left out. No, you haven't. And I want to pray for you. If you are one of those inside of your saying that, Pastor, I need help. I don't want you to come here. But just there in your heart, cry out to God. And I will be releasing grace to help you. Father, in the name of Jesus. You know somebody who is crying inside his heart. He feels like the world is turned upside down on him. The world is pressing on him. Father, I pray that you help him, God, with his attitude towards the things that he's going through right now. The misfortunes, the pains of life. God, I pray that you help him to see the good in the darkest hour that is going through. In Jesus' mighty name. Holy Spirit, continue with what you have started today. I know you are the greatest teacher that the world has. Teach us the mind of our Father. In the name of Jesus. As we leave for home, I pray. May the grace of our Lord Jesus, the love of our Father, and the fellowship of Holy Spirit be with us now. And forevermore, in Jesus' mighty name, amen.